Now, I told you that we should take a, a hard look at the musical material, the seven swaras or the twelve swarasthanas. Now, let us get to a more fundamental question. Why do we say or how is it that we can say that there are only seven notes or seven plus five swarasthanas? Now, look at the keyboard for instance. How many frets are there? Surely more than twelve? Look at the veena. The veena's fretboard has, the standard veena has 24 frets. And surely you and I can hear many more pitches than just 12. And how is it that we are able to uh, account for all the musical material with just this 7 plus 5 swarasthanas? Now, we say Sarigama Padhani. Hmm? Sarigama Padhani. And like anybody would know, the next swara is again Sa. Sarigama Padhani. Sa. That is again Sa. But it is a different pitch. It is not this, it is here. This is a different pitch, then how is it that we are giving it the same name? And in fact, it goes on ad infinitum. It goes, and so on. And on this side also, now how is it that we are giving the same name to different pitches? Now, this is possible because of a unique and very fascinating property of sound perception, how humans perceive sound. Now, if for a moment we compare the phenomenon of sound with the phenomenon of light, the one thing that is common to both is that they are both a continuum. Now, between one color shade and another, there is a continuum. Theoretically, there are infinite shades. But the human eye is able to discern the differences between some. At certain points, we are able to discern the color differences and we give it names. We give them names like red, orange, blue, violet, indigo and so on. So also in sound, theoretically, between any two pitches, there are infinite pitches, theoretically. And even in practice, now I say this is and the next pitch on the keyboard is but let me, let me try to produce a pitch between these two. This is the pitch here. Now, no, this is neither there nor here, it is in between. It is just a little raised. But we do not give it the status of a swara, we do not give it the, any position on the uh, keyboard, we do not use it to make music. What is happening is this, we have sa and we have re1, which is the next position in the 12 swarasthana schema. So, sa, re, now theoretically there are infinite pitches possible between these two and in actual practice also a couple of pitches at least are discernible between these two which is what I try to demonstrate. So, let us say that there is this, this other pitch here which is almost re. We can, this is certainly a pitch that we can hear. Sa re, this is re 1. Sa re, this is almost re 1. Now, this position and this pitch will not be given the status of a swarasthana or a swara in the context in which sa, this sa and this re1 are swaras. 
as such this is a pitch this is a, a musical pitch and surely will be a swara but only it will be a swara in any other, in, a, in another context not in the context in which this and this are swaras given that this is the sa sa and this is the re re if this is sa then that is re now this position which is almost re is not accorded the status of a swara it could of course be a swara only not in this context because music is made by combining swaras and this pitch cannot be viably combined with this sa uh, or this re the music essentially involves combining swaras relating them and these relations and how these relations sound that is what has determined what pitches have been picked out as musical notes it really has got to do with the harmonics of notes which is a physical phenomenon now the human ear and brain perceive sound in ratios the relationship between one pitch and another is perceived in terms of their ratio now when i say sa sa ri ga ma ma ga ri now let me play these two notes together this sa and this higher sa and you can see that they are merging i'm actually playing two pitches you can hear two different pitches like you can if i play this you can hear two pitches why this is also called this as i said again is possible if this is say x hertz the frequency and this is 2x hertz and we perceive it as a ratio the ratio is perceived and we we hear emergence of the uh, two swaras which is why we can call this swara also this pitch is also sa this is also re if we compare uh this with perception of color we don't see a similar phenomenon as the wavelengths wavelength increases the colors keep moving away from each other there is no emergence at least as far as the human range goes Now this space between this sa and this sa where this note merges with the next note that space is called a a sthai it is called a sthai or a sthana in carnatic music which corresponding corresponds to the octave in western classical music and saptak in hindustani music so this position between the two sas is called one octave or it's called a sthai or a sthana in carnatic music now we can say with a little more clarity that within one sthai or one sthana or saptak or octave there are seven notes and five variants although there are many many more pitches within this uh sthana but the musically relevant ones are at least at the superficial level in the case of carnatic music we will see later on that even the other pitches not named in these 12 swara sthanas even many other pitches come into play now let me also talk about the notion of scale here now scale is also another very widely used word 
and most of us would have heard of the expression musical scale. Now, what is a scale? A scale is an ordered set of pitches. If the pitches are in increasing frequency, are ordered in increasing uh, frequency, then it is called an ascending scale and if the frequencies are in a descending order, it is called a descending scale and the corresponding terms for it in Indian music are arohana and avarohana. Let us look at some of the scales that are used in other kinds of music. I have a small demonstration here by Vibha. This is the major scale, C major scale. The other scale that is widely used in western classical music is minor scale, the minor scale. The Chinese scale is uh, pentatonic or what it uses five notes. This scale is also widely used in Indian classical music which is Mohanam in Carnatic music and Hoop in North Indian music. Now we just saw that in western classical music predominantly two scales are used and in Chinese music a pentatonic or a, a scale that has five pitches that is predominantly used. Now, in Indian music, Indian classical music, we have a very large number of scales that are used widely and there is also a rigorous system of generating scales that was put forth around the 17th century and we will see more about this later on in the course. Now, we move on to uh, a related and perhaps slightly technical issue of the, the tuning of the scale. Now, we have two ways of tuning the scale, the even tempered tuning or the just tempered or natural scale. Now, and this also revolves around ratios and intervals. Now, when we say that there are 12 note positions or swarasthanas in, an, in a sthai, in an octave, now it is only natural to assume that these 12 notes are spaced at regular intervals. That is, they are, the steps are equal or the difference between any two consecutive notes is the same. But actually it is not so. The way uh, music has naturally evolved or what may we call the natural scale, the, the, the natural scale that the human ear naturally picks out is based on ratios and this happens because of the physics of sound of harmonics and of how we perceive sound. Though the steps in the natural scale are actually uneven. So, the difference between sa and the first re and the difference between the this the difference between this and this and the difference between this and this this and this are not equal they are not spaced evenly and um, it is not glaringly so it's not glaringly different but it is uh, enough to make a significant difference to the music making um, this is a fascinating topic and it can get pretty technical. For those who are interested, uh, there is an interesting video at this YouTube link. You may visit it.
Now, for purposes of this course, what it is necessary and sufficient to know that uh, the steps between the, the node positions in a natural scale are uneven. But a keyboard or a piano or a keyboard like this uh, is tuned such that the steps are regular. And uh, this is in response to needs of Western uh, orchestral music. And in fact, the difference between any two notes, note positions, will be in the order of the twelfth root of two. So each step is of that order. All tones are separated by equal intervals. Now, Indian music, all Indian music, being essentially melodic, there is no room for the equal tempered or even tempered scale. We only use the natural scale. And this is also one of the reasons that a keyboard or a harmonium is inadequate, even undesirable in Carnatic or, or even Hindustani music for that matter. There are other compelling reasons too, but this is uh, one of the reasons. The next concept, what I am doing in these sessions is just covering some basic concepts, so that we can uh, enter into the uh, realm of Carnatic music equipped with an understanding of these concepts. So, another important concept is that of the Adhara Shatya. Adhara means um, that which bears, it is it's fundamental, it is, the, it is the base. And Shatya is of course the name for the first note, Sa. So, Adhara Shatya very simply is the tonic or the fundamental. Now, Tonic is important in other musical forms too, even Western classical music. Uh, all melody has to have a strong sense of the tonic, must return to the tonic. If it does not, if you have the sense of the melody hanging in the air, not quite returning home. But in the context of um, Indian music, Indian classical music specifically, Adhara Shadja has a much more significant role. The Sa is, is what determines the rest of the scale and the Sa can be any pitch at all. Now, I can use this as my Sa and once I have fixed this, the rest of my scale is determined. I could use this as my sa with reference to this the rest of the scale is determined or I could use a pitch between these two. The sa is fixed according to the performer's convenience. In contrast with this, if we say what is A for instance in the context of Western classical music, it is a specific frequency 440 hertz. If we say C, that also is a particular frequency. But if we say Ga or Sa or Pa, you can't you can't just say that this is it is this frequency or that. You determine the Sa. Once the Sa is determined, you have your other swaras. Now, this has an uh, an important implication that. A composition in Carnatic music or Hindustani music is not tied to any particular pitch as a fundamental, as its fundamental. The same composition can be performed with any pitch as its tonic. I may sing a composition using this as my tonic. Someone else may sing using this as a tonic and it is the same composition. There is uh, no problem at all here. What matters, however, is that once the particular pitch is chosen as a tonic, that has to be maintained, it cannot be changed. The tonic cannot be changed. Again, something that 
could happen in the context of a Western piece of music, the tonic does change sometimes in, in what is called modulation. Now, another implication for this is that since a composition may be rendered by ad 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 adopting any pitches at all as the fundamental or the tonic, uh, the performer is expected to sing or perform or play the instrument with a tonic of her convenience. This also implies that there is no division of voices into types. In Western music, we have uh, voices divided into types, soprano, tenor, baritone and so on. We, there is no, it's simply irrelevant in the context of Carnatic or Hindustani music because these voice types are based on the absolute range of the voice. So uh, a soprano is a voice that has a range from say from about 261 to 880 hertz. But this is simply irrelevant. The composition, any composition can be sung with any pitch at all as its tonic and therefore the need for dividing voices into types simply does not arise in the context of Indian music. Now once this, the sa is fixed, we have also fixed the sthai or the registers. We have three registers that we speak of or three sthanas. Now if this is the sa, sa anything below this is called the and so on. That is the mandra style. And this this is the madhya saptak or madhya sthai. And from sa onward from here onward sa and upwards this is called the tarasthai tarasthana this is the Adhara Shakya. Sa and this is the Mathyasthai. Sari Gama Padhani. Until this is the Mathyasthai. From here, this the higher sa onwards, this is the tarasthai. And lower. and so on. These notes indicate, these, these uh, dots indicate that it is in the lower register. Now this is the mandrasthai. And it is expected that a Carnatic vocalist should have a range from this to this. Given the Adhara Shatya, half an octave below and one and a half above. Many Carnatic musicians do have a range beyond this, but as far as Carnatic compositions go, this two octave range is quite adequate. I will now sign off with this rendition of a, a great composition by Tyagaraja. It is in the Raga Kedara Gauli in Adi Talam. The composition demands this range, Mandra Pancham to Tara Pancham, that is a range of two octaves. 
not all compositions demand this range and very few demand a range beyond this. Listen to this and write to us what you think of this composition of this music and having covered some of these fundamental concepts in these last few sessions, we are now ready to enter the portal of Carnatic music proper and we will take up the topic of raga in our next. Jalaja 